Just before we get started with today's video, I want to say that it's brought to you by me. Or rather, another channel I do called Business Blaze. More on that in a bit. While the Russell family is mostly known for their acting today, according to Kurt Russell, baseball is really the family business that nobody knows about because our other business was sort of out there in the public and seen by a lot more people. For example, Kurt Russell's nephew Matt Franco was a major league baseball player from 1995 to 2003 and also played in Japan from 2004 to 2006. Long before that, Kurt's father Bing Russell, who is perhaps best known for his role as Deputy Clem Foster in Bonanza and Rob in the Magnificent Seven for a period played in the minor leagues and went on to own and run the Portland Mavericks baseball team. Kurtz inherited his father's love for the game of baseball, and even though he was already a reasonably successful actor by the age of 20, having appeared in nine movies and numerous TV shows at the time, he decided to pursue baseball professionally. He states, I played ball from when I was a kid. It's just always been in my family. My dad had minor league teams. My great grandfather was a great ball player. I played it as long as I could, and I always thought I could do both. I wasn't really serious about acting. I was serious about baseball. I don't know if it was more important to me than acting, but I was a young man and I had geared up to play pro ball from the time I was 13 or 14. The acting was something that just came along, but I made good money acting, so it wasn't something that I was just going to put aside and pretend it didn't exist. Kurt was scouted by the Angels, Cardinals, Twins, and Giants, but the teams were all somewhat reluctant to sign him due to concerns that ultimately proved valid that he'd only be a part-time player taking time off on occasion to continue acting. It's gotta be a good life, right? <laughs> what do you do? Movie star, also professional sportsman. Just uh, I do them both. Why not also astronaut? Not really, but that would be, you know, the triple cool. For instance, in 1971, when he signed with the Angels Class A Bend Rainbows Club for a switch-hitting second baseman, he reported late to spring training as he was still filming Now You See Him, Now You Don't. In an interview while playing in AA, Russell, and I don't know if that's supposed to be double A, is baseball. I have absolutely no idea. Anyway, Russell stated, movies take precedence in the winter and baseball in the summer. If I should get hit by a truck and my face was ruined, I will play baseball. If I find out I can't hit the ball hard enough, I'll make movies. Baseball is a lot tougher than acting, a much greater challenge. Acting is really very simple. They give you the lines and you go out there and deliver them. Baseball is different. After playing for the Rainbows, he went on to play for the Walla Walla Islanders in Washington in 1972, and then the Portland Mavericks, owned by Bing Russell, and finally, in 1973, he played for the AA El Paso Sun Kings. So, you're probably wondering, well, was he actually any good at baseball? Former Major League Baseball player Tom Treblehorn, who played with Russell for two seasons in the minor leagues, had this to say. Kurt could hit, that was his strength. He was a switch hitter and had very good bat accuracy. He could put the bat on the ball. The rest of his game suffered from the fact that he couldn't devote enough time to it. While with the Sun Kings, Kurt batted a 563 with a 1.526 OPS, technically leading the Texas League in hitting, though in a very small sample. In what turned out to be his final game with the team, he was attempting to turn a double play when the runner hit him, tearing Russell's rotator cuff. Russell described the event as follows. I used to throw batting practice a lot, and with some injuries on the team, I was playing all the time, which I hadn't been earlier, and with throwing batting practice, I think my arm was somewhat tired. But I got hit high on a double play just as I turned it, and it surprised me, because we were way ahead in the game, and I thought the runner would turn off to right field. So it was my fault. I kind of lackadaisily came across the base, and he hit me high. I didn't know what happened, but the next thing I knew, I was lying flat on my back. It didn't really hit me how bad it hurt at the time. I went out that night and played air hockey, and I began to feel my arm bothering me. The next day, throwing batting practice, it didn't feel right, and over the next week, it just got worse. Frank Tanana told me, I think you've torn your rotator cuff. I said, what are you talking about? I didn't know what a rotator cuff was. It wasn't that well known back then. Frank said, yeah, I know what that is. I think you've torn it, and I think you might be done. And I was like, yeah, sure. I went back to LA a couple of days later and went to the Job Clinic and, and the doctor did an arthrogram on me. And, and he looked at the arthrogram and he looked at me and said, aren't you also an actor? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, you're an actor all the time now. After the injury, Russell, <laughs> that doctor's bedside manner, <laughs> top notch. 
After the injury, Russell was released from the team on May the 17th, 1973, partially so he would be free to go and do some acting while he was healing up over the next couple of months. If he can make a motion picture, we'll let him, said Bing Russell. He can't play for eight weeks, and then Dr. Robert Curlin, the Angels' team physician, says it'll be another two weeks for him to get back in shape. That's ten weeks. So if he can make a movie, why not? He was supposed to return to play for the Sun Kings, but ended up playing back with the Portland Mavericks. During this stint with the Mavericks, besides acting and coming off a major injury, he was also named VP of the Mavericks, making him the only professional baseball player at the time who was also an executive of a professional baseball team. Whether it was the injury or just having way too much on his plate between rehabbing, acting, and helping out with the business side of things with the Mavericks, this all resulted in his worst season by far, batting 229 with a 253 slug percentage in 83 at bats ah <laughs> oh, these baseball videos i have absolutely no idea what that means <laughs> needless to say this spelled the end of his career as a professional baseball player i guess he wasn't very good then <laughs> After a brief one game, one at bat curtain call in 1977 with the Portland Mavericks, Kurt Russell ended up with minor league stats as follows 292 batting average, 361 on base percentage, two home runs, and managed to walk almost as much as he struck out, 38 base on balls to 41 strikeouts, in a total of 356 at bats. He also made the Northwestern League All Star team in 1971. I assume those baseball stats mean something to you baseball fans. And if you want to see another channel where I also don't know what I'm talking about, but kind of make funny at it, well, check out Business Blaze. It's filled with facts and knowledge, but it's much more of a laid-back format. It's all about business, but it's actually interesting. It looks at the most epic failures and times things went wrong, but also little-known successes. Generally, just the weirdest stuff that I could find from the business world. We talk about the Fire Festival. Theranos. Train wrecks like that. But don't be put off if you're not into business stuff. Most people in the comments describe it as hardly being about business at all. Not sure if that's a selling point, but anyway, I'm linking to the channel below or just search Business Blaze in the YouTube search box. You'll also find it that way. And let's do some bonus facts. The role of Crash Davis in Bull Durham was specifically written with Kurt Russell in mind. However, despite the fact that Russell was an established actor and also a former professional baseball player, the studio preferred Costner for the role which she was given, much to the surprise of Russell. Russell states, I went to Europe on a vacation, having said the script was great, and I came back to discover Kevin Costner was doing it. Ronnie got a better deal, so I pulled a practical joke on him that wiped the slate clean for me. I was working on Winter People about 60 miles from where he was doing Bull Durham. I got on the phone, pretended to be production chief Mike Medavoy, ordered that Ronnie be pulled off the set, and I told him that the dailies were shit, the movie was shit, and Costner was not working. Here's what we're going to do, I told him. Kurt Russell, 60 miles north of you, finishing Winter People tonight. He will be on set Monday morning. There was this long pause until Ronnie realized who it was really talking to, and then he said, You son of a b I had him going for a few minutes, though. Incidentally, despite not getting to star in the movie Bull Durham, Russell still thinks it's one of the greatest baseball movies ever made. He states, The problem I found generally with the writing in most sports movies, and it's why I haven't done them, for the great and most part, they are written from the fan's point of view and not written from the player-coach point of view. This is what Ron Shelton and I talked about when we were talking about getting together to do a baseball movie, which he ended up doing called Bull Durham. The great thing about baseball, I said to him, is baseball is the only sport played by men for women. All other sports are played by men for men that I know of. Because baseball players would just as soon have 50,000 women in the stands. We couldn't care less if there was a guy there. But football is a gladiator game. They want men cheering in the stands. Baseball players like to look good in their uniforms and run around the bases and say, how's it going? They want to be cool. That's what they're about. And Ron wrote it from, which in that regard was the point of view that you really need to understand baseball, the point of view of the woman who is with the ball player. That's the point of view to write a baseball story, which is why Bull Durham, I think, is one of the best made. Moving on from there, it turns out it's not just normal people who think the Academy Awards are ridiculous. Russell does too. As he stated in an interview, at times I take great pride in it, being a member of the Hollywood community. But most of the time, I'm completely ashamed of it, especially on the night of the Academy Awards. It's the one night of the year where I want to just crawl in a hole and hide. It's a bit like standing shoulder to shoulder with <laughs> Mike Nichols and I were talking about politics once and he said, the thing is, you can't stand shoulder to shoulder with <laughs> And he's right. 
I can't. What's interesting about Oscar night is it's a joke. It's about how bad everything is. Everybody knows that that's the night to applaud Hollywood in all its horror. Russell isn't just harsh on the Hollywood culture, but also those who consider it artistic. To go on about acting as art is ridiculous. If it is an art, then it's a very low form. You don't have to be gifted just to hit a mark and say a line. And as far as I'm concerned, hitting my marks and knowing my lines is 90% of my job. I'm always criticized for talking like that. Maybe the reason I do it is that I never got the chance to develop a real desire to act. I was acting by the time I was nine, so it seems like a natural thing to do. Anyone who finds acting difficult, just shouldn't be doing it. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, smash that like button below. Don't forget to check out Business Plays. I'll link to that below. And thank you for watching.